Well, it's finally cold enough to uh, build some ice on some of these upper mountain reservoirs, and Ryan, we finally found some places. Yeah, we got some ice. I was here yesterday. You know, we've got five, six inches of ice to work with, so feel pretty good about it. It's terrible that we have such poor snowpack conditions this year. It is. But that's the benefit of it. It allows us to access some of these reservoirs. We normally don't get to access unless you have a snowmobile or a sled dog or something like that. So we were able to just drive to this one and hopefully we do well fishing today. All right, my first time on the ice this year, so I'm excited to get it going. What species can they expect to find in some of these reservoirs? Oh, we manage these reservoirs differently. Um, but the most common species are going to be rainbow trout, brook trout, uh, cutthroat trout. Colorado River? Yeah. Um, some of them have tiger trout though. Cool. Uh, today we're kind of hoping we can catch a grayling. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. I've never caught a grayling through the ice, so that'll be cool. A lot of people have never caught a grayling. Yeah, right? And tigers in here too. Yeah, occasional tiger um, and Colorado River cutthroat. Yeah, that'd be Trout cool. as well. They just come down the drainage. Kind of cool having all that diversity. You just, every time you hook a fish, you never know what you you're going to have. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, so I'm grabbing a mealworm here, and I've got this rod rigged up with a jigging spoon. This is a clam pinhead minnow. Um, and what I do is I break the mealworm in half and I put a piece on each one of these treble hooks. And the benefit of that, one, it seems like I foul hook a lot less when I'm jigging because I got equal distribution of mealworm on the hook. And then two, if you miss a fish, chances are you might just get one piece of the mealworm and you still got a, another one where you can still entice them to hit again. So I'm going to go with the buckshot spoon on this rod and then I'll do a tungsten jig I think on the other. What do you think about a buckshot? Yeah, I, I think it could work. Small I mean, one. I've caught them here on buckshots before. Just I just make sure it's smaller, you know. And I just dropped that to the bottom and reeled up a few cranks. So now while I'm jigging, I'll watch this watch this dead stick. I got a fish on the finder right now. Got him. First fish of the trip. And it's a brookie. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't get a brook trout yesterday. A nice little brookie. What is he, about 12, 14 inches? One species down. Oh, he came down to, oh, he hit it. There he is. He, he didn't like the, uh, he didn't like the, what is it? A oh, little rainbow, second species of the day. He didn't like the jigging spoon. That's a pretty good rainbow. It is. Yeah, they're good looking fish. That fish saw the jigging spoon, didn't like it, but as soon as he saw that, oh, there he goes. As soon as he saw that tungsten jig head, man, he was off. He shot down like six feet really fast and just slammed it. That's fun, first fish of the year. It's a rainbow, it's all right. Two species down, let's see if we can get something different now. Grayling. Grayling? Not lying. Look at that beautiful dorsal fin. Beautiful fish. Fun fish. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're a little bit harder to coerce, but yeah, they're fun to catch. Good fighters, beautiful fish. With authority. Hitting first ice can be really productive. The biggest concern you should have this season is making sure the ice is a solid four to six inches. And remember, the clear ice is much stronger than cloudy ice. Oh, he whacked me. Big grayling. You got another one? Don't tell him, let him stay out there and fish for rainbows. <laughs> another pretty fish, oh look at that. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Oh, there it is, it's on me. Dang, what are you doing? Another grayling? No, oh, that's fighting too hard. Rainbow. Look at that rainbow. Oh, that's a good one. Nice. It's as big as we've seen. What, 14, 15 inch fish? That little hump on his head. It's cool. All right, I gotta get back in the game here. This is a, a dead meat rod made by Clam. 
and you can see it's got a really sensitive tip. These noodle rods are, are really nice for detecting strikes. So you, this just has a little tungsten jig on it. And you can see it just barely shaking when I'm jigging it. But the nice thing about it too is if you get a larger fish like we just caught, it actually has some backbone to fight that fish as well. Yeah, they're a really nice combo to have in your arsenal, especially if you're targeting smaller panfish like bluegill and perch, things like that. So definitely recommend them to anglers. Acting like rainbows. Oh, missed him again. Don't do that too, too many times. You'll, uh, you'll have Rob talking smack. He's still down there. Oh, he about, he about ripped it out of my hand and I still missed him. Got him. I southpawed that one. Oh no, he's tangled up. Oh, it's a big rainbow, isn't it? Tangled up, or I got another one on. Yeah, I got another one on. Ah! <laughs> Jeez. Come on. I better help you get your fish grayling, off. Grayling in a rainbow. Better help you get your fish off. Here, will you take that grayling off for me? Can I touch him? Gosh. That's a great grayling. I can't hook a grayling and he gets a double. A rainbow and a grayling. Just my luck. A great rainbow. Beautiful. Look at that. Doubled up. First one was a left-handed hook set. That's not very common for me. <laughs> Pretty average grayling here. Uh, a little bit smaller. Got some 13 inches. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, what do you want to do now? <laughs> I'm not leaving until I catch a grayling. Yeah, I heard. I heard you. That was cool. That was right. The grayling hit the dead stick. I saw that. I'm really struggling today, but I was ready to spend the night if necessary to catch a grayling through the ice. Oh, got a fish on me here. Which one are you going to hit? That one. There we go. This could be a grayling. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a grayling! <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Oh, that's so cool. I've always wanted to catch a grayling through the ice. Looks like a male. It's got the big dorsal. It's beautiful purples. Greens in that dorsal. It's just gorgeous. Not native to Utah, but really, really cool fish. And to get it through the ice. That's a good sized grayling. That's a 13 inch grayling probably right there. So let's get him back in the water so we don't kill him. Oh, that's cool. Haha, <laughs> through the ice. A jig on the, there he did it again. Are you uh, tangled? That's not good. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Well, it looks like Ryan has adopted some of my bad habits. Give me another opportunity. Oh, yeah, still got him. Be a great Oh, there's another one down there. Oh, he's hitting it. I'm coming. Get him, come down. Help me, Ryan. <laughs> oh, that is a gorgeous rainbow. Oh my gosh. That is the best one I've seen all day. Look how beautiful he is. What do you got? Don't worry about it. Yeah, you got Big grayling. On my rod. <laughs> double on my rod, grayling and a rainbow, just like Mosey. Yeah, but you didn't reel in your double. Look you. at the color on that. Look at that. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Which color do you like? I like them both. That's just gorgeous. Beautiful fish. Okay. Okay, a little fish kiss. Oh, you didn't let me do it. He didn't want to kiss you. Oh, okay. Nice. Fighting pretty good, I'm guessing rainbow. Really? So Ryan, when did you guys put those in here? We've been stocking them in here a couple years. The reason why we stocked them in here is one year when we were doing our surveys in here. Yeah. We actually found some. Oh, okay. And they had just come down the dra drainage, but they were really healthy. And we just thought it would be a really unique opportunity to have grayling in here, as well as rainbow trout and brook trout. Oh, he's on that rod. <laughs> Looking at the screen. Anglers really like diversity. Oh, nice rainbow. But on top of that too, you know, you can drive to this lake and there's not a lot of those opportunities in the state of Utah. They've done well. I mean, some of these 13 inch fish, you know, they're probably two year old fish. It would be really neat to be able to come up here in the summer too and, and catch them. So as this year, as most people saw, there was a, a big influx of people out recreating and fishing this year. I think we're gonna see the same thing for ice fishing this year. It is very likely. Yeah, it was the busiest year I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and then I've even seen it extend to the fall, you know, on, like on Flaming Gorge and the Green River, but. 
I would expect a lot of people on the ice. Yeah, um, there's some do's and don'ts that if people have either forgotten or haven't been on the ice much that they should either know about or remember. And a couple of those, you know, don't crowd people especially. That's one of them. Sure, definitely keep your distance. I mean, people want to go out and enjoy their time together, but yeah, definitely keep your distance. Have a little bit of etiquette, like you said earlier. Yeah. Um, and then the other big thing, you know, is, and we dealt with this all summer, is trash and litter. You know, pack it in, pack it out. Yeah. Um, if there's not enough room in trash receptacles at the park or the location that you're at, just take it with you. Throw it in your truck. Yeah, we saw a lot of people do that this year, you know, on the, on the forest as well, where they were just throwing it around dumpsters and then animals are getting into it or the wind's blowing around. Yeah, please just take it with you because there's not a lot of trash pickup yeah. this time of year. And there's no trash pickup on the dang ice. And there's no trash pickup on the ice. Yeah. And we've already had situations this year too where people are leaving burbot on the ice. That's illegal. Yeah. That's, that's littering. Um, so yeah, just take it all with you. Well, it's good things to remember when you're out this year, you know, and uh, especially when you're taking your kids out and you're trying to set a good, good, good example for them. Yeah. Man, it's a good learning lesson. I know it has been for my kids, and I continue to do it with my 12-year-old. If you start them young, they're gonna, they're gonna hopefully pass it on to my grandkids. Yeah, and you want it, you want it as beautiful or as pristine as like when we showed up. Sure. Yep. Sure. So. Might be the last week that people are able to access this with the truck, but there's always still a snowmobile in it. So you can get up with maybe even a four-wheeler for a while. Definitely, and, and people do. We talked to some snowmobilers today that were way up high up here, went real high lakes, and yeah, so there's there's always opportunities for that type of mobility. Yeah, you just have to put your homework in and, and come up here and, and try a few places and kind of experience it for yourself to figure these out. And there's all these lakes have fish in them, so. You know, the gorge is growing ice quickly too, so it's yeah. gonna, there's gonna be a lot more options whether you're up here or down in the Uinta Basin here in the next week or two. Hey, I'm Adam Meek with my good buddy Ryan Mosley, reminding you to get out with your family and friends. Make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night. Grayling in a rainbow. Better help you get your fish off. Here, will you take that grayling off one? Can I touch him?